Hey, what's up everybody? Today is 12th of May. I'm very happy and proud to tell you that today is International Nurses Day. In spite of all these hardships, there are hundreds of thousands of nurses who are working for us. We salute your dedication and sacrifice and I'm very much proud to wish you all a happy Nurses Day. Today, in the beginning of the video itself, I would like to tell you this video is not related to entertainment. It is purely related to education. Before jumping into the actual content of this video, I would like to appreciate some people. All the YouTubers in India, guess what? I had to record the video today and I found a lot, lot, lot of disturbance in and around. It was actually the noise pollution. Know the truth? This video is about 10 minutes, but I had recorded more than two and a half hours. It's not that I had made number of mistakes during the recording, but it was the noise pollution that kept me away from recording the proper sound. I really, really, really got to appreciate all the YouTubers in the world, those who are taking such a great pain to create the content videos. That to more particularly, those who are there in the disturbed environment. In this video, we are going to see two concepts. First one, I'm going to answer a few basic important questions related to light. And second one, we are going to see a few important terms that are related with refraction of light in order to learn the furthermore concepts. Come on, let us learn something new. Questions first. First question. What is light? Light is a form of energy or light is one of the forms of energy which can be perceived by our eyes. Second question. What are the sources of light? Here, the sources of lights are divided into two types. First one, natural light and second one, artificial light. I hope I need not explain what is natural thing what is artificial thing. So under natural thing, we have a number of examples. The first and foremost one, which we should be remembering forever is sun, solar energy, nothing but sunlight. And the second one, certain insects. Okay, please leave the names of these insects in the comments below. And the third one going to be plants and mushrooms, which also emit light. In the artificial sources of light, we have a number of them. First one, light bulb. So the third question, how does sun produce light? Sun produces light due to thermonuclear fusion. When light nuclei, like hydrogen atoms, combine at high temperature to form helium, they release a lot of heat energy and light, which we call it as thermonuclear fusion. So thermo here means heat. A lot of heat. And the fourth question, what are the basic characteristics of light or properties of light? First point, light travels at the speed of 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second in vacuum. But it is not true for air. Second point, light always travels in a straight line, which is rectilinear propagation of light. And the third point, Light is a form of energy. We have already seen it in the first question. So energy here, the packets of energy said by Albert Einstein, which is nothing but photon. The fourth important point, the light enables us to see the reflection of light that is coming from the object, particularly diffused light that is coming from the objects after reflection helps us to know the color distance of the object, shape of the objects. And the fifth question, does the speed of light remain same in two different transparent media? For example, air and vacuum. Air is also a transparent medium. Vacuum is also a transparent medium. Thus, the speed of light remains same in both these media. If I have to give you the textbook answer, it is yes we take approximately 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, both in vacuum as well as in air. 
But if we have to see this very clearly from the same textbook point of view, then it is also wrong. Why? Because we find refraction in the atmosphere also. For this case, we are going to see the speed of light exactly what it is in the vacuum as well as in the air. The exact value of speed of light in vacuum is 299,792,458 meter per second, whereas in air, 299,704,644 meter per second. That is 87,814 meters per second less than the speed of light in vacuum. And we can also see one more important transparent medium that is nothing but glass. The exact speed of light in glass is 199,861,639 meter per second. So these values are calculated with the help of refractive index. Then the question is, guess what? Yes, what is refractive index is going to be the sixth question. The ratio of velocity of light in vacuum to the velocity of light in a specified medium. For example, this specified medium can be water, glass, diamond or even air. The symbol for refractive index is a Greek alphabet mu. It is also indicated with capital letter R dot capital letter I. For quick reference and understanding, we take the approximate value for calculation. For example, the speed of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, whereas in glass it is 2 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. In water, 2.25 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. And the seventh important question is, what is reflection? Return of light to the same medium after striking a different medium is known as reflection of light. For example, a light ray traveling in the air medium comes in contact with the ground or else a stone or else a ball and it bounces back to the same air medium which we call it as reflection of light. An eighth important question I am not going to answer, you are the one who are going to answer. Who gave the world the speed of light? And second one. A few important terms that are related with refraction of light. Now, in here you find a glass and in the glass you find water and as well a pencil. It seems to be bent. So we would see the reason behind this bending phenomena bit later. Now it is very important to know we have already learned the basic concepts related to light which we should know to learn refraction as well reflection of light. The same is the introduction for this concept also. Now we are going to learn eight important terms related with our concept. First, we need to see the figure that I have created to make you understand the terms. Here is the figure. So in here, apart from these eight terms, we need to see two more terms which are the main cause for refraction, that is two different transparent media. In the given diagram, you also can find air and glass as media. You find it here, air medium 1, optically rarer and glass medium 2, optically denser. We have already known the meaning of this. So comparing with the air, glass is optically denser in which light travels a bit slower than that of air. Glass medium is indicated with a rectangle which is also named as A, B, C, D. Here it is important to know A, B is a plane or B, C is also a plane or C, D is also a plane as well A, D is also a plane where the light can go through. Now let us see the terms one by one. I have my own order of learning these terms. If you would like to follow, do so. It will be easier for you. So first term, let us see. 
incident ray. What is incident ray? The light ray striking a refracting surface is called incident ray. It need not be always a refracting surface, it can also be a reflecting surface. Depending upon the concept that we deal, we have to take it. So incident ray, here in the given diagram, you find PQ as incident ray. The light ray which travels in the first medium and incidence strikes the second medium is called as incident ray. The second important term is Q. We call it as point of incidence. What do you mean by point of incidence? The point at which the incident ray strikes the refracting surface is called the point of incidence. Nothing but this light ray strikes on the plane AB at the point Q. This striking point where it gets connected with the second medium, you call it as point of incidence. And the third important term that we are going to learn here is N, nothing but normal. Here you would find N and N dash, which is indicated with a red line segment, which is a perpendicular line to the plane AB. So then if you are asked to write what is normal, then the perpendicular line drawn to the surface at the point of incidence is called as normal. The fourth term that we are going to learn here is incident angle. What is incident angle? The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called as incident angle. So mere definition can be the angle which the incident ray makes with the normal at the point of incidence is called as angle of incidence or incident angle also symbolically represented as small letter i and the fifth term that we are going to say here is refracted ray what is refracted ray the light ray traveling in the second medium either bending towards the normal or bending away from the normal is called as refracted ray right now let us just remember the light ray which travels in the second medium either it can be optically denser or optically rarer medium which travels in the second medium we call it as refracted ray in the later videos we will be seeing why the light ray bends towards the normal or why it can bend away from the normal and the sixth term that we are going to see here is small letter r nothing but refracted angle the angle which the refracted ray makes with the normal is called as refracted angle you can understand this by a simple statement the angle between the refracted ray and the normal the angle between the refracted ray and the normal is called as what refracted angle and the seventh term that we are going to learn here is plane of incidence what is plane of incidence the plane containing the incident ray and the normal is called as plane of incidence so since it is a 2d figure i will not be able to show you very clearly anyway i will be telling you the meaning of it we will be seeing 3d figure in the next video so the plane of incidence is nothing but the plane containing the incident ray and the normal and what is the eighth important term that is plane of refraction what do you mean by plane of refraction the plane containing the refracted ray and the normal is called as plane of refraction so we have learned all the terms that we supposed to be eight important terms and two different media is it the light that can travel fastest in the world that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second Yes, of course, but we do have one more concept which travels faster than the light, which we call it as tachyon. That is the concept for one more video. We will see it in the upcoming videos. What if we can travel at the speed of light? How much time will we take to reach moon or Mars? We don't have any technology to travel at the speed of light. But if we do so, we will be able to reach the moon's surface in the blink of an eye. That is. 1.28 seconds approximately 1.3 seconds we will be there on the surface of moon the distance between moon and earth is 384400 kilometer what about the distance between mars and earth 
The distance between Mars and Earth is 172.48 million kilometers. If you are traveling at the speed of light, we will be able to cover this distance in 575 seconds. That is approximately nine and a half minutes. Within nine and a half minutes, we will be able to reach Mars. I'm very much happy about teaching this content on YouTube. I believe everybody has learned something today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If any of your friends need to learn this concept, please share the link with them. If you haven't subscribed the channel already, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Love you all. Cheers. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.